Oh. Right, uh, it, time is four o'clock Friday afternoon. Um, I was hoping for an early finish, but it is what it is. Um, so, got free weekend. The weather's not the best. It's pouring down rain. It's the wind's died off though, which is good. So I think what we're going to do is um, I've, I'm in the van. I come to work in the van. I've got the fishing gear in the back. I've got some frozen bait. But let's go fishing. Um, Bristol Channel. Said down that way. I know uh, low tide is about half past six. So that gives us two hours, two and a half hours to get down there. Um, I haven't fished the Bristol Channel much stroke at all. Once after a storm. Uh, and we gave up after half an hour and came home. So that was a wasted trip. So hopefully this one will be a bit better. Um, but the first thing I've got to do is find fuel. Oh, well, I think I found some diesel at Tesco's, um, but they're only they're down to what four pumps out of twelve. So let's see if we've got any by the time we get there. One sixty-three a liter, which is crazy considering it was one fifty-five yesterday. Oh well, right, we're fueled up. Um, fuel is that expensive now. I think it cost me about 115 quid, just under 115 quid or something like that, to fuel up. Um, but yeah, it's that expensive now because it only pre-authorizes like 99 quid. Um, I paid at pump, and then it wouldn't recognise my card because I'd just used that card. So I had to then go to the cashier, get her to reauthorise the pump, finish fueling up, and go in and pay for the rest of it. Um, just madness. And the other thing that made me laugh is that massive queue that I filmed was people waiting for petrol, but there was a big sign that says petrol on all pumps. It was only diesel that was limited to the four pumps. And you got idiots just queuing and queuing and queuing. There was an MX-5, I think, uh, behind me, just sat waiting for me at a pump. There was like eight other pumps with petrol on, and he sat behind me waiting for the diesel pump. Um, morons. Anyway, let's get down there. Weather's shocking, but let's get down there, get some fishing done, get away from the idiots. Awesome! Yeah, it took a lot longer than I expected. Um, but having to detour to find fuel and stuff. Uh, dropped us on the M42 coming around Birmingham at bang on five o'clock, so... What should have took us two hours has took us three and a bit, so it's about half seven now, so we're an hour after low. Um, like I say, I haven't, if you can tell, with me having the torch on, it's it's pitch black. Um, so yeah, going to go and uh, suss it out. I've had, a, I've had a quick scout around, I think I'm all right part where I am, so I'm going to have a quick get changed, um, get a gear on and just go for a walk, see if we can find somewhere that looks sensible to fish. Battery point, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's very slippy. Um, the rocks are dry, but it's just covered in covered in this kelp uh, and, and algae. It makes it. I've got my walking boots on, which are normally pretty good, but um, I really need to invest in some studded studded boots properly. Um, the other issue I've got is. I mean, like I say, it's low tide, I'm fishing low tide, I intended on fishing low tide, it's not a surprise, but you've got about 30 foot drop down, and none of it really, I mean, there's that, there's that over there, which I might go and, I might go and set up on that, on that flat ledge there, but it's, it's all just weedy rocks. So the question that I'm asking at the minute is even if you hooked into something, how do you how do you get it back up from there without even getting without bouncing it off the rocks and, and losing it or uh, getting your 
getting your gear stuck in all this weed. Um, if you've fished here before, drop it in the comments, let me know. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's baffling me, to be honest. I mean, you can't really see it. Let me see if I switch my light off. Yeah, you can't see a thing, but um, put that flash on. Does that make any difference? No, no. Um, so, yeah, drop it in the comments, let me know. Um, I mean, that gives you a bit of a an idea of the... The gradient. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's baffling me a little bit. I'm not sure where to set up. And just like that, we're, we're set up. We're fishing. Um, I said just like that. It's uh, it's probably the longest it's ever taken me to uh, take me to rig up. Um, yeah, just I think uh, I'm not feeling it tonight. I don't know why. I don't know if it's coming straight from work, um, the traffic, long day at work, the fact that the rocks are slippy. It's dark, I haven't fished here before, I don't know, um, but uh, hopefully now we've got some baits out, um, wait and see what happens, and uh, get a couple of hours in, hopefully get some fish, I'll bring you back if we, uh, if we catch out. Almost as soon as I switch you off then, there's a really good knock on that right hand rod. Fish on. That's uh, my first ever rockling. Chuff with that. That's from what I've uh, from what I've seen. That's a decent size. There we go. Ooh, this slippery little sod. So, first fish, um, it's a nice night, but uh, I, don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to be fishing too late tonight. Um, I'd quite like to get up and hit low tide um, first thing in the morning. It's about, uh, I think low tide's going to be about uh, half seven in the morning, I think it is, seven o'clock. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure as I'm going to come back here. Um, like I say, I think, I think the thing that's putting me off the most is slipping around on the rocks. I had, uh, if you've watched the video that I put on uh, from the Cumbria trip, I slipped on some uh, some shingle, some icy shingle, smashed my rods. Um, struggling with a bit of a groin strain, which means that I don't feel too balanced on my feet anyway. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just not... Uh, I can feel myself getting quite frustrated by it. Um, so I, I'm not sure as I'm going to come back onto a rock mark tomorrow. Um, I've uh, heard of a couple of other marks that I might go and try out. Yeah, that's been picked clean, so uh, I'm going to uh, rebate this one, um, fire this one back out. I've put the other rod away because it uh, snapped off and uh, I'm not really in the mood for uh, losing loads of gear, so rebate this one. I think we'll go for. Uh, Squid and worm on the next one. Um, fire that out. Give that another half hour. It's uh, time now is. Uh, it's just gone ten o'clock, so uh, give it to about half ten. Um, maybe eleven o'clock. See how much. If this rain sets in, half ten I'll call it quits. Um, if this rain rain stays away a little bit, might fish on. See if we start getting some bites. Probably just keep it a nice short session tonight. But I'm I'm chuffed with that rockling. Um, Really tough. First rockling and a good size one. I've seen seen some caught before and they've all been quite small, but uh, that looked like a fair old chunk. I've, I've measured it. I'm gonna have a look and uh, and see what uh, what size they do grow up to. But I think that was a, a pretty decent one. It'd certainly give the rod a good clatter anyway. Um, just want a good size cob now. I'd be happy at that. I think tomorrow. Um, Tomorrow I'm going to target rays, and it's still a bit early for rays, but Bristol Channel's 
good all year round from what I've from what I gather. Um, never caught a ray, and uh, yeah, I'd like to tick that one off the, off the list if possible. So uh, yeah. Anyway, get any more bites, I'll bring you back. I don't know if you can hear that rain coming down, but it's uh, yeah, it's persistent now. I've just got a booty. Stepped in what I thought was uh, a shallow puddle that I've been stepping in on our disappeared off work machine. So uh, I've got a wet boot now as well. So uh, yeah, I think that's uh, drawing a close to the evening. <laughs>